brought people close together. And when people come together, we have to develop relationships and we have to communicate and we have to understand people better. Especially now, you know, if people are talking from different uh, countries, there's, a, there's a, a cultural difference. So my job pretty much is you've nailed it really. I mean, I, I help individuals with their own mind and behavior and, and, and psychology and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I have my own academy, but, but in essence, it's, it's really helping company cultures form better relationships. Cool. And just in case, I just noticed that some of that might not have been captured. We're going to do a brief re. So this is like you in Matt's not here because <laughs> I think I pressed the wrong button. So we're just going to catch up a little. Oh, did you freeze? Are you are you still there? Uh oh, John. Paging John Clayton. John Clayton, please come to. The all right, while well, John's frozen, and he comes back, I'm just going to recap. So this is like you in. The reason Matt's not here is oh he'll come back. All right, so. You, there we go. Oh, are back. you back? I'm back. What what happened? Happened? Hold on. You went black. What's going on? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Can you you see can hear me, me, but I can't hear What's going on here? Okay, hold on. Why? Is that on my side, you think? Oh, no, actually. I'm just looking at the uh, internet. So Bummer. What's going on? Okay. All right. Uh, we'll keep trying to go. We're having technical difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. Can, can you see me, Mark? See what happens when, maybe if I end and start again? No, that won't work. Cancel that. Um, darn it. All right. Okay, here, let me, Yeah, I see you talking, but I can't hear you. What's going on here? I got a big black screen. John, let's see. Let's just play with stuff, tweak it, try to get him back on here. Yeah, nothing's working. All right. Maybe I got to restart. Because he's there. I can see him. I see oh, okay. his tag. I can see him talking, but I can't hear him talking. Oh, okay. What is going on? Here, let me see something. You know what? Let's try again. Go in and out, I guess. Can you like sign off and then come back in? Sure, of course I can. Here, all right. So technical difficulties. He's gonna come back in. All right, let's see if it works this time. Yes, he's back. Right. We're I wonder back. what happened. I didn't press any buttons. I promise no, you. No, 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 no. That's just weird. <laughs> I've never had that happen again before. I mean, all right. So We'll start it. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna play the intro again, but we'll kind of start over. See if anybody joins us because I think we lost some people during that time. So this is Psych You In. It's usually with me and Nat. Nat has chosen to. Um, she always always had a, a dream, um, and she's pursuing um, a a program where you know. I mean, she's working a full time job like most people do, and then she's gonna do a concentrated program in a short period of time. So like two months to seven months, I mean, two years into seven months. And so she's just not going to have a lot of time with going, visiting her parents and everything. Anyway, for personal reasons, she's opted out. The show may continue in a different format or um, John might join me as co-host or well, I'm talking, you know, to different people. We might have a different show. Who knows? But anyways, here's our guest, John Clayton. And basically, we're not going to repeat what we said, but <laughs> he moved from Great Britain to Mexico for a job in love. <laughs> and um, just like me, uh, even though I lived in a Latino neighborhood, I learned a little bit of Spanish. He's trying to learn Spanish. And we were just talking about um, what, what he does for a living. So my little snapshot of it, and then we'll join the conversation again, is that he creates, he improves and betters culture through building relationships of groups and individuals. And so we were talking a little bit about that. So uh, if you caught it at the beginning, we're repeating ourselves and we're sorry about that. But now we'll go back to John. Hey, John. <laughs> and oh, this is why John hates being on camera. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> and it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. So do you remember what you were talking about before we had that? Um, well, we were talking about how, um, you know, we live more in an interconnected world and we need to build relationships. Yes. 
with people. But I think to, to be able to build relationships, I think you've got to understand people. You've got to understand yourself, how you work and what triggers you, you know, but you've got to, then you've got to understand people. And I think um, I think the world needs it now more than any, anything. And yeah, you know, whether that's a company or, or company or culturally, you know, we, we need it. And when we build better relationships, when, when we build better relationships with our colleagues, our family, friends, and our clients, well, I think I, I think uh, I think we only can have a win-win outcome, you know, with right. that. So that's why I think it's important. That's cool. And you were talking about how you have international clients and um, how COVID kind of forced you to be a global guy. It certainly did. <laughs> it, it certainly did, Mark, because um, because you know. In the, back in the UK, maybe 10, 15 years ago, it was just basically seeing people in the UK face to face in say therapy. And then I used to go, well, I still do actually, um, I fly over to uh, the Middle East and, and work in the Middle East with companies and government organizations. But that was really about it. Mm. Um, of course, I've, I've worked, I've, I've been to America a few times and, 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 and whatnot. But uh, no, this is really, really like probably like yourself or anybody else for that matter. It's really made you go like that, you know, and and really, uh, from my point of view, um, being able to connect p with people on a global scale, and I think that's most wonderful, you know. Yeah. So how do you get global clients? Is all through LinkedIn, or do you have a yeah, well, predominantly it's, predominantly it's LinkedIn. Um, okay. But um, over the past 10, 15 years as well, I've slowly built up a good um a good global uh relationship globally yeah. you know in particular the middle east uh, people in the united states and people in europe so they know me and we've worked together but right. really you know now of course now though is i'm, I'm branching out more and uh, i'm speaking to amazing people like yourself who are probably might not have uh, done you know two years ago so um yeah. you know, that, that's fantastic and, and and to be to be on programs such as this and to go out and and, and spread your word and your message I, I think it's a very exciting thing we all have now and we're all able to do uh, yeah. so that's fantastic by the way i mean you, earlier i'm not sure what happened with the glitch but Earlier, you said you weren't comfortable on camera. You're doing all the right things, like looking in the camera. So, oh, oh, it, there, like, yeah. and I'm kind of like looking down at you. It looks like, hey, what's Mark doing? Is he looking at the computer screen? Is he listening to John? It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm looking at my camera out there. The problem is, I'm terrible with technology. I'm, I'm learning now, of course. Yeah. But I remember my first Zoom call um, about, when was it? Maybe about eight months ago. I think it was eight months, sometime last year. Oh, it was a nightmare. <laughs> you know, one oh, thing really? is talking to people and explaining what you're doing and, and, and teaching and training and all that. But then I've got to, now I've got to worry about the technology side and, and then I'm terrible with stuff. So I've, I've had to really learn uh, new skills and learn how, um, how to, uh, you know, set up certain things like, like, um, like your online stream and, yeah. All that kind of stuff, and I'm currently now building my website and um, some training courses and my academy. So I'm having to really now do that. Uh, so, so now I'm trying to learn the technological side, and every day I think I'm driving the um, support people crazy because every day I'm, I'm I'm chatting with them online and I'm saying, "How do you do this?" And how do you do oh, that? Yeah. So are you so doing I'm, it on your own then? But with yeah, I'm doing like it on my own. You do something, own. break it, and then you ask someone what happened. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, I'm, I just started a WordPress account, and on the recommendation of Mr. Rob Berry, I hate WordPress, but um, I'll get better at it. But I, I actually hired someone to help me, but because I just got so frustrated. Oh. It's like I didn't know what plugins to buy and all that, or even like download. And yeah, it just got really bad. Well, I've so, seen your, uh, intro. your intro is absolutely superb. Uh, and I know it's, no one saw it though today. Oh, God. It was brilliant <laughs> as well because and I'm looking into it now thinking, how would you do that? So I'm going to have to go out, learn how to do it. But, um, oh, well, yeah. you know what? I know someone who does those for people. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> 
I did uh, Carl Sean Watkins. I did T. Gonzalez. Um, and I did a couple of others, but those are the two main ones. And then I do my own. I have three shows. I've done them all. But yeah, I can help you with that. Um, so you mentioned the Middle East. So you got clients in the Middle East. Now are those and do those tend to be like like long customers or you get one customer work with them help improve their culture and their business and work with people yeah. and then they recommend another company to you yeah I, I, that's it pretty much it i mean um over when was it now i think it was back in 2013 i think um i was asked to um come over go over to the uh, united arab emirates and i was helping um government departments and the police force and some military as well um, in helping them understand um, in, in, within the context of behavioral development and helping them improve their knowledge and skills within the context of behavioral development and helping them understand certain things and the culture and all that mm. kind of stuff and yeah i mean i love it i'm still doing it now less today of course because it's very difficult now just to go over right. to and fly over, but I should imagine that will happen again fairly soon. And um, you know, and, and like in life, you know, you, as you go on in life, you meet people, and it's kind of the snowball effect. You know, yeah. you do a good job for people, and you know, and uh, people notice that, and then they they offer you opportunities, and that then led me to Q8, and I was in Q8 and doing freelance work and. Uh, and, I, and I love it, and, and, and I love the Arab culture. I think it's superb. Um, and and yeah, that, that and that's pretty much it. And you know, they, they, they love it because they're very open-minded and they love to learn new concepts and new mm -hmm. ideas. And um, yes, and, and, and they're so open-minded and, and right. they want to learn. And, and I love that, you know. And that, that of course encourages me. I I, I feed off that and. Um, I think that that brings out the best in me when I know people are buying into what what I'm actually talking about, you know. So right. uh, I love it. I, I really do love it. So, are there any kind of models that you like, or have you formed your own? Like, is there, like, I mean, there, you know, there's Gestalt, there's neuroscience, there's client-centered therapy, there's, you know, family of origin, there's organizational development, blah blah. Are there any like models that you use, or have you done the Clayton model? Like, we'll have a book. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. It's a great question, Mark. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you a little story of what happened with me very briefly. Okay. Um, I, I went through a situation where I wanted to learn about people and behavior and all that kind of stuff. And I initially looked at um, psychotherapy in the UK and different universities and everything else. And um, it was okay, but it, there was just something, for me personally, there was just something missing. I think it was the, I, I was more interested in looking at, you know, how do you understand people, but then how do you understand, how do you get people to transform in a positive way? How do you do that? And, and what I was looking at wasn't really, wasn't really meeting my criteria or goal. So I went off and, and explored different, um, different models and everything else. And, and eventually, I got to uh, I got to NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, yep. and um, I was absolutely fortunate enough to um, to be trained by some of the best people, I in my opinion, um, in the world, uh, world renowned. And uh, it went on from there, and that, that kind of gave me the hunger. And I mean, I'm going back now. Gosh, I think it was about 15 years ago. Yep. And um, it just went on with that. And it was a little bit like going down the rabbit hole for me, Mark. You know, the more you know something, and it kind of, you know, triggers something, and then you want to investigate, and then the more you learn, but then the more you realize you don't, what you don't know. And that was happening with me. So it's like, it, it almost became an obsession. And, and I was digging myself deeper into knowledge and knowledge and knowledge. <laughs> and it led me to different things like clinical and medical hypnotherapy, which, yeah. A predominant thing I do, and uh, then it went on to other things like the genetics and, and, and personal and professional development and different models like that. Gestalt really is good. It's part of NLP actually. It's one of the things they model uh, they model it on. So that's kind of what I do. But um, I kind of now take an integrated approach, right? Uh, where I use I do use NLP stuff. I think it's 
one of the profound, most profound technologies out there. But but I use other things what I've learned over the years as well, yeah. and I put my own thoughts and theory, and ultimately put it in, putting it into practice. You know, and, and I've seen people change dramatically. I mean, yeah. things you know, things I've I've seen it's like, and then they change, they transform, and then when they go out there and, and, and do things themselves, I, I think that's that's the ultimate. Uh, the ultimate fulfillment, you know, when people are self-sufficient and they go out and make things happen themselves. Yeah, yeah I love I love NLP. The NLP though is a double-edged sword. It's kind of like like he said, it's neurolinguistic programming. Um, actually, if you know the story of Tony Robbins, he was um, in NLP training. He didn't flunk out per se. He um, got tired of going all through the process and he said oh i can do practical stuff with this already so i mean and this is gonna sound weird because this is not a reflection on tony robbins so we'll put that to bed period tony robbins was an llp and now he's doing his stick so but nlp to me is a, a double-edged sword in that it's very powerful but in the wrong hands it can be very manipulative oh, uh, because well, of its power so but i mean i like it i mean i like frog in the prince and and then, um, I think that's a really, really, really important thing you've just mentioned, actually, Mark, because, you know, I've had experiences in my past when I've gone to networking events, you know, face to face, and, you know, you get talking and everything else, and then they, they, they hear the word NLP, and one of the first, uh, you know, what's that? oh, gosh, I've heard about that, it's very manipulative, and, you know, and all that kind of well, stuff. Well, it can be, it depends on the person who's using it, yeah. Absolutely, it really is, it really is, and... You know, the, 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 you know, whenever there's a positive thing, there's always something, you know, what's not so positive. And I think yeah. one thing what gets misunderstood, though, with NLP is the, um, the the ecological side, where it's we do things where it's ecological for the person, the client, the people around them, and ultimately the, um, the, the world, you know. Yeah. And as you said, though, it depends on who's doing it. And right. the thing is, you can't do NLP to somebody. It's a, it's a do with process, and um, I think when you get clients like that, um, I think then that becomes the process of behavioral transformation. I think it becomes a lot more smoother. Right. I mean, so to me, I mean, I yeah, I do NLP, Gestalt, all that kind of stuff, family of origin, uh, Kubler Ross, all those models. I was a therapist for like three and a half years. Yes, yes. I got out of it though, because my specialty was sexually abused children. I just can't couldn't handle it anymore. It hurt my soul. Because even though, um, you know, I, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but most therapists and psychologists, if they're in a clinic or a situation, they have their own. And it's to get all the slough, it's to slough all the crap off. Because you can take, no matter how good your boundaries are, you can take on a lot of crap. And if you take that on, it could hurt your psyche and your soul. And so that's kind of what happened to me, even though, you know, I met regularly intensely. But one of my favorite books is Out of the Garbage Pail. And my favorite, it's the first book on Gestalt. So it's by Fritz Perls. And my favorite part is the intro. So he's in the intro and he's trying to give a brief uh, description of Gestalt and the preface. And basically, you know, he's going, it's about brutal honesty and just being straightforward people and all that kind of stuff. And then like, I don't know, it's about his way through. He goes, oh, that's a bunch of bullshit. I'm so full of bullshit. You know, just like calling bullshit on so, Anyways, but that it's a great book. So anyway. Yeah, so we all take all our experience and build it in one model. And that's why, I mean, I'm not a big Carl Rogers fan, but I like, um, I really like client-centered therapy only because the main thing is focusing on the client. Because if I stay centered there on the client, then I'm not, I won't be manipulative. And like you said, it's the working together with the person to help the person. So, no, yeah, that's pretty cool. Exactly, exactly. I think for me though, as well, like, over the years as well, I've, I've, you know, predominantly in the early years of my career, it was purely NLP driven. You know, it's all uh, NLP technology and techniques and everything else. But then as, I, as I've evolved um, in, over the past years, I've gone really deep into, you know, the, the epistemology, you know, well, you know, the questioning of questioning and, you know, it's become a lot more philosophical, actually, and and I think I think I think I think that gets missed out a little bit 
uh, if I'm honest, in therapy, the philosophy of, of life and you know how we go about our lives and how we make profound changes internally. And and I think I think that gets missed out a little bit. And I've I've over the years now I've got really into it. And um, mm. you, you just you, you do start to then question things and you start to I, for me personally, you know, you perform diff or, or should I say you you change your behaviour and you act differently in certain. Yeah circumstances and I, and I love that I really do do you so you probably don't have this problem but uh, sometimes I did Does, do you ever find it bleeds over into your personal life like where you're kind of acting like the therapist with someone and they're like <laughs> it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. I've lost friends. I don't have any friends anymore. I, I, I don't have any more friends. I have people, I, you know, where you, you do actually, and you know, you, you have to be very careful when you work. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not to, not to, um, not to really, um, you, you know, that's that natural inclination of, of wanting to help people. So if you spot something with right. them, in the early days, I used to be like like an agony uncle, and but, but like without their permission. Right, right, <laughs> so right, right. I've had to really stop myself now, when because because people, friends, family, they think I'm a little bit weird. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And, and so I've had to I've had to really, really, really hold back on most things now. These days, now I I, I basically I kind of tend to just say, okay, if you want to learn or know more about it, just let me know and we'll talk about it. Right. So I think I've matured in that way, but in the early that's days, good, that's good, that's good. I throw it down people's throats. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've had, um, yeah, some interesting conversations. Cause I mean, now I guess, even though I'm unemployed, my main corporate gig kind of job is like organizational development, which is still. It's kind of like what you do, but it's still psychology. It's working with individuals and groups and to build the culture. And yeah, if you're just talking to somebody and you just go into that mode, you some you can see the I don't know if you know that look. They're kind of like are you <laughs> analyzing me. Oh, not oh. per se. I'm analyzing what you say, oh. and I'm trying to improve our relationship. And they're like, shut up. And I left out oh. the thing because I already Stop flipped. I already flipped it off, and now YouTube's gonna go. Uh, sir, you had an obscene <laughs> gesture in the middle of your show, so we're going to have to... <laughs> <laughs> it a Christmas, sat around the table, and people, you, you know, some people, in particular guys, uh, I've noticed a common, quite, be quite common, actually, uh, yeah. people run away from you. You know, they find out what they hope, and they run away from you. I remember once at a uh, networking event, a business networking event, um. we were, it was the first time I'd seen these people. It was back in the UK, and we were stood in a bar and like you know, like 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 you, like you do. And uh, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Blah blah. blah. Yeah. And it's like to me, what do I do? It's like, oh God, here we go. Get ready. Three, <laughs> two, one. Oh, well, I help people transform their own behavior. <laughs> gone. They've gone. I think two people stayed, and they said, oh, that's. Yeah. Yeah, that's just just a placebo effect. Right. And then I can't remember what movie it's from, but it's like, "Hi, I'm Mark McGover, and I'm here to help you." <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> Get out of here! I don't need any help. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. But yeah. uh, it, it, it's quite fun, actually. You, you get used to it. Um, I, I said to you before, you know, in the networking event, it was like all that mind body stuff. It's just uh, it's just a placebo effect. Right. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Do I say, do I react? Do I react? Uh, and yeah. then I just basically said, well, where does the placebo effect come from? You know, and uh, it, it just goes like that. And then it was like an awkward silence. And it was like, okay, does anybody want a beer? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Beer. It's what's for dinner. <laughs> so um, you have a unique opportunity because we kind of have it audience and then they won't have that during the headlights look but like what do you have any i'm not necessarily advice but like what is the over the last say five years what your work what is the number one common theme you see like with organizations or individuals not necessarily like advice but something you see that would help the audience go oh yeah i do that i should 
cut that out, or here's a way I can get out of that, or, yeah, or not. That's, that's a most wonderful question. I think one of the things I've noticed over the years in, in, in particular companies is the, the conflicts uh, departments have with each other. You know, you get the sales department not happy with the accounts department. You get the management not happy with uh, the lower management, and it, and it can get really messy. And uh, you know, there's all these totes about building bridges and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But you could talk to, for, for you to be able to build bridges and, and, and on strong foundations, I think it, it comes within. You've got to focus on yourself first before you focus on anybody else. I think people in organisations they've, they've got to look at themselves and say, okay. How can I change? What can I do to 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 have a better relationship with this particular department or this particular person? And then it's under, it's the under, so it's self understanding. And then I think it's understanding the people in front of you who you interact with on a day to day basis. It's understanding people's value levels and, and beliefs and attitudes and you know their, their deep belief systems and, and ultimately then their ego. You know ego, I think. Mark, it gets really misunderstood. You know, the common, yeah. common belief of ego is like me, you know, wanting to win. Or, well, it's because I've got a massive ego. But it's a lot more deeper than that. And we're driven yeah. by ego. So if two departments are, are, are literally, you know, like that with each other and they're like that with each other, it's, it's separating the ego and then getting to the root cause of that. And, and then, as I said, you're understanding yourself understanding uh, the person in front of you and then when you when you get it you know you don't always have to agree with with each other and you don't have to agree with each department but right. you've, got to, you've got to rise to that level and, and and what's the what's the purpose behind you know but behind the relationship why do we why do we do what we do in terms of uh, within a company you know without that understanding of why we are here and why we what what are we doing and why do we do what we do uh, by moving up a level um it's all you're always going to have a, a, a friction and tension and conflict and everything else and i think it's co i call it cognitive maturity you know and, and i mean that with, with, with respect as well you know we're, i mean sometimes we we, 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 we tend to react to certain things and when we don't get our own way we tend to our ego right. then starts, starts starts prodding us and then that's how we react so we can yeah. understand that i think that then starts to then uh, build on, on, on more solid foundations yeah i think i can't remember was it nlp i can't remember if it was in one of my masters or anyways there's this concept called already always listening and so it's like people are groups. Um, as soon as someone talking to them takes a tone or a certain look or uses certain trigger words, they have an already always listening. So they already think you know, they already think they know what you're saying, even though they're no longer listening. It just triggers, boom, already always listening. So now I heard you. Well, no, you didn't hear me. And so that we need to get to that. Yeah. It's, a great, it's a great analogy. It really is. Yeah. It's a great analogy. You know, um, yeah, we do a lot of mind reading and different, we, we, you know, we <laughs> make an interpretation of, of what that means before it's actually being actually, um, you know, described to us. We, we, we tend to fire really quickly. Right. And then we end up in cognitive turmoil, you know, round and round. Oh, yeah. What did that person really say? What did it really mean? Why did he look at me that certain way? And, yeah. Um, that's when you well, get I mean, people are afraid to ask too. They just go with their assumptions and roll with it. And then you have weird it puts risks in relationships and stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. It's kind Absolutely. of sad. But I mean it's it's reality, but Yes. Yes. It certainly what you, is. What do you think of Myers Briggs? Yeah, it's good. Um in the early days it really excited me. You know. Yeah. It was like, oh wow, look at this. We can we you know, uh, we, we can know about ourselves and, and all that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And as you go on, as you learn and develop more, in, especially for me, it's good. I like it a lot. But then, as I referred to earlier, for me, it was like learning. And it was like going down the rabbit hole. So the more right. I discovered, the more I realized I knew nothing. <laughs> you right. know? So it was like learning the Myers brick. Oh, this is interesting. You know, yeah. did you ever see, oh, that, I like this. But if you're truly open to learning, that's always true. Well, as soon as you pursue any subject, 
the more you learn about it, the more you know you don't know. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so I like it. I, I like it, uh, but there are other models out there what really, for me personally, what are, are, are magnificent, you know. Like, for example? Well, there's, there's one called um, Spiral Dynamics, and I've taught this now for over 10 years. And actually, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a, a free webinar uh, on spiral dynamics. And it's a, a theory and a system where, that's right, yes, spiral dynamics. And okay. It's theory and system where you can best understand people, yourself, society, but also on a macro level. In fact, I did podcast, I've done a podcast of it. Oh, cool. Um, it's fairly complex to the, at the beginning. Is there like a website or a book or something? There's a book it's called A Spiral Dynamics by Don Beck, um, which is a good read, um, which I which I absolutely love. And and I think actually when when I was lectured in in the Middle East, um, the 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 spiral dynamics when I taught it is being so so profound. That people are glued to their to their chairs uh, yeah. and they just listen and they, they, they go in a trance because it's such a system where where it, for me it was like social the, the discovery of of DNA for me personally it was like whoa this is like really powerful stuff and I did a po I've done podcasts of it but I, what I really want to do is I'm going to do some uh, webinars on it free webinars. The thing is, it takes a long time to explain it because there's at least, well, there's eight, um, there's eight categories, mm -hmm. and you've got to really, you've got to really understand it, and, and then when you when you teach it, you've got to make sure that you're explaining this properly because it can get really misinterpreted, and then that alone can get really messy, yeah. um, you know. So, but it's a, it's a, it's a tremendously powerful. Um, model it's a theory so it's not perfect yeah. but, but, but i absolutely love it i really do oh so you brought that up that's one of my pet subjects i think almost i think there are very limited facts in the entire universe like maybe five that i know for sure are facts and everything else is a theory and you use a theory or a mod here this is the vent cover version and just want you to react to it once i'm done so the vent cover proposal is that there's very few facts in life like gravity if you walk off a 20-story building you're going to fall at 9.8 meters per second squared and you're probably going to hurt yourself if not die that's a fact however almost everything else is a theory and there's models based on the theory and you use them as long as they're helpful to you and then you can move on absolutely yeah. uh, and, and that, again i think you've hit the nail on the head with that um you know, it, within within the context Man, of the head, yes. <laughs> you should have an, uh, an icon. Well, <laughs> so I have. Speaking of technology, I'm going to tell on myself. So I've had this Rodecaster thing. Shanae recommended it, and it has like really cool sound effects. But the way it's hooked up to my computer, I will hear it over my headphone, but the audience and yourself won't hear it. So I got to figure out how to get. So I could have done. I think one of them actually is a kind of thing. That's the point. anyway. <laughs> uh, I should have actually got uh, two of the uh, two two things and just gone cling like that. That's there you go. There you go. Can I do it now? Can I do it now? Sure, sure, sure. No, no, it didn't really work, did it? Oh, I thought maybe you had a triangle or something. No, I'll, I'll get one though. I'll get, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm lucky enough to be on your show again, okay. next time we have a bit of a light bulb moment. Oh, yeah. Ding. So think about that. Think actually. I mean, we still have 13 minutes, but think about that. Do you want to co-host something weekly? Um, should we keep it psych you in, or we could create a whole new thing, whatever. I mean, psych you in was done around neuroscience, but I like this. I'm going to read that book, Spiral Dynamics. It could be around spiral dynamics and other theories. And like every week we could bring on a guest and like explore different theories, or I don't know. I don't know what that looks like. Absolutely. So. I, I, I'm very open-minded, Mark. Um, yeah. I, I love being on here so far. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's it's casual but informative and i like that and, uh, yeah. so i i'm in you know and um, okay. i'll be more than happy to do some kind of uh, collaboration whether it's like this or in a different format but um, oh, yeah, yeah I, I think um i think it's really important that you know we we 
we do get the message out there to people, uh, yeah. whatever that message is, so long as it's a positive, has a positive yeah. effect on people and society. Agreed. Uh, and and I think that can only be a good thing. And I think we live in an information age. Um, people love information now, but I don't just want to give information to people. I want to give right. knowledge because I think there's a difference between information and knowledge. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh valid. man, you are speaking my lingo. I do this whole yeah, lecture exactly. on, exactly. on data, information, knowledge, applied knowledge, or wisdom. So that exactly. takes the whole training. So there's a lot of people who know data, and then data is pretty useless unless you put it and conform it and you know analyze it, and then you have information, which is categorized, and then knowledge is when okay, I got this theory, I got this information, how do I apply this? And you apply it, and then wisdom comes after doing a long time. However, to me, wisdom is like you said it probably four times this whole show. When I go into a, su a subject. It interests me. I want to know everything about it. I go down a rabbit hole, and then at the bottom of that rabbit hole, I now figure out how much I don't know. <laughs> like I learned more about this shit, and then I don't know. Now I know that I don't know. Yeah, exactly. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that the transfer of knowledge um, is, is exceptionally important. You know, and, and, and far too many people tend to keep their knowledge themselves and I think for, for, for mankind to evolve and for society to evolve I think collaboration is one and then it's the transfer of knowledge uh, in, oh, yeah. a, in a way and well I mean to me that sums up LinkedIn I mean LinkedIn and oh, places it's... like it is people who have gone before well not everybody does this there's way too many people who don't understand social media social marketing and just talk about themselves, blah, 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 I'm selling this, buy for me. And then as soon as you connect with them, I can tell in a second, because it starts out, whether it's cryptocurrency, foreign exchange, multi-level programming, or even like they're uh, like some kind of, and I'm not knocking everybody that does it. I actually believe in cryptocurrency. Yep. Foreign exchange, I don't like that much just because, anyway, because it's speculation and actually cryptocurrency isn't. But back to my point, my point is that people, um, like they'll connect with you. And then as I can tell, it always starts out with hi, immediately after you connect. I think it's a robot, but I'm not sure. And then you go, hi, I'll reply. And they'll go, how are you? And I'll go, I'm fine, how are you? And they never answer my how are you? And they go right into, where do you live? Yes. And I'm thinking, yes. if you looked at my profile, you know exactly where yeah. I live. What do you do? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, have you had this, Mark? I've had this, I think, probably three times. Um, you know, you get notifications on uh, on LinkedIn. You know, uh, yeah. happy birthday, uh, congratulations, congratulate them on all that kind of thing. And I, and I, I like I like to send off a birthday wish. Oh, yeah. um, I think it's just it's good. I think it's civilized. And uh, on three occasions though, when I when I wish them a happy uh, birthday, I get pitched. Oh really? <laughs> I get pitched. Oh, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Thanks. oh, by the way, I, you know, it's like bang, 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 bang. It's, yeah. it's, One, you it's don't know cool. if I have a problem. Two, you don't know if what you have solves that problem. And you have no relationships with me, so you have no business selling to me. So, But uh, on a flip side, though, a friend of mine on LinkedIn, and uh, she's a real little friend, I, she's great. But I think it was two years ago, for some reason, there was a glitch. And it said, hey, so-and-so's birthday is today. I wish her a happy birthday. So I wish her a happy birthday. And she's like, what, what the hell, Ben Cover? You know, it's not my birthday. My birthday was like three months ago. You know, I thought it was, but but LinkedIn said it was now. She's like, yeah, I don't know what's up with that. So now I wish her, for her I, every three months, I wish her happy quarter. <laughs> and then on the actual birthday, I go, happy birthday. So. Brilliant. I love that. Happy <laughs> hey, happy quarter, Liz. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, to today, um, to today, I WhatsApped my best friend in the UK, and I've known him for, I don't know, 35 years? I don't know. Huh? Uh, I get his birthday mixed up every single year. <laughs> His birthday is in July. July, see, I nearly got mixed up. Yeah. July, July the third. But I always get it mixed up with June the third and what date is oh. the third. So I messaged him 
Uh, happy birthday, you know, but did I at least, point? Early is better than later. Though. Happy birthday, have a good day, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, dude, it's next month, you know, <laughs> and it's every year, so. Early is better than late, though, I say. <laughs> if I get in within the window, like, two weeks beforehand, and that saying the actual day, hey, your birthday's coming up, I hope you have a good one kind of thing, yeah. I'm going to use that. Happy quarter. Happy quarter. I'm, going to be, I'm going to be busy on your actual birthday. I actually don't know when your actual birthday is. I just know I'm within two weeks. Happy birthday. So have a good one. Call me if you want. Yeah. I'm bad about that. Well, my mo I mean, my mom was the, she had the, the address book and all the birthdays and stuff in it. And then when she passed, it's like a couple of years ago, I'm like, uh-oh, great. I need her address book with all the birthdays in it. Yeah. <laughs> But, oh, well, what can you do? So, I mean, we're coming up on the end of the hour. Um, what we'll do is we'll agree to talk outside of this and see what we come up with and what we do. Kind of telling you and the audience at the same time. And then, um, yeah, we could keep Psyche in and I'll just change the title, you know, and put um, John and Mark or whatever. And then, yeah. So we'll talk about it. And then when I shut off the show, just hang in the green room if you have some time and we'll talk. But since this is the last minute, do you have any, like did this spring anything? You want to say anything to anybody or the audience or whatever? Like yeah. your wisdom, John Clayton wisdom coming at you. <laughs> My wisdom, <laughs> for what it's worth. <laughs> um, I, I, think, I think just, I think you've got to, I think you've got to be on a never ending path of of building better relationships with people uh, because i think you know it's all been the the theory of uh survival of the fittest and that then unfortunately creates you know ferocious competition and i'm not against competition i think it can right. serve as well but it comes to a point where then if we have too much of strong real aggressive com uh, competition we lose sight of, of, of the evolutionary path we should be on. So I think do as much as you can to collaborate with people, but in a very sincere way. And I think if we collaborate with people and build relationships, build better relationships, it's gonna just be a win-win outcome for everybody. And if we can just go and, and get to that level, I think then um, I think then I think life's gonna be you're gonna have personally a very compelling life. I really do. Cool, you hear it here, ladies and gentlemen. Collaboration, open and honest relationships, collaborating with each other. And that's the, that'll help the world, which I agree. I agree. Um, so, anyways, I want to thank you very much. Pleasure. Sorry for the technical glitches. No, I think I, I when the recording know. comes out, when the recording comes out on my profile, I think the first five to 10 minutes is going to be not there. I'll see when I do it. And if you want a copy of it, I can put it on uh, Google drive and send it to us. But anyways, I want to thank my guests, um, John Clayton. Uh, thank uh, Gina and Lolo. They they showed up and they commented. Uh, they're the Hemp Sisters Nation, by the way. So I call her Mama Epps and Lolo. And everybody, speaking of collaboration, whether you believe in prayer or good thought or whatever, put out some good thoughts to Mama Epps. She, uh, her knee cannot... Um, I can't remember what she ripped or broke, but it cannot handle any weight bearing for like three months or something. She went in with what she thought was minor. And then it's like, yeah, sorry, sorry ma'am. I won't be able to walk on that puppy for three months. So just put out some thoughts. I'm sending her, um, here's how I roll. I'm sending out uh, knee jokes to her every day. <laughs> I text them to her. Hey, here's one. Bum, 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 bum. Anyway, so no, but anyway, let's go. Let's go back to John. So I just want to thank you very much. Uh, we'll Pleasure. talk about the future and all that kind of stuff. Thank you, everybody, for psyching you in. Uh, good thoughts out to, to Nat, whatever, she, everything she's up to. She's got a lot going on. She's busy. Hope she keeps in touch. I uh, I told her on any of my shows, if she ever watched a drop in, just let me know, and we'll have her drop in. That'd be kind of cool. Um, so uh, thanks, you. thank you, everyone. Have a good Thursday, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.